It is the duty of the free man to resist tyranny at every turn. Every man will either watch his freedom stripped away or take action to protect what he loves. Introducing the A3, the newest revolutionary body armor from Armored Republic. The A3 is the new standard for lightweight multi-hit body armor. A3 plates are incredibly light at 4.6 pounds. The patented design captures fragmentation while remaining multi-hit capable. The A3 will stop up to M80 ball, yet comes in at only 0.7 inches thick. The A3 is the thinnest NIJ.06 compliant or certified composite standalone plate that includes the drop test. The A3 is the first of its kind, patent pending, that combines an alloy strike face with polyethylene backing, revolutionizing body armor technology by providing strength and durability while remaining sleek and maneuverable. The A3 is the new standard in lightweight body armor. The fight against tyranny just got stronger. Hey y'all, welcome to Cross Politics. We're back from the Raging Cajun Nation. We made it. Oh, yeah. Down there at the Boudin, the Bayou. The You actually did pretty good on that. Yeah, I did alright. Boudin. The alligators. We had alligator while we were down there. Twice. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. How about the turtles? Any turtles? <laughs> uh no turtles, but next time they wanted to take us frog hunting, gator hunting, yeah. and uh um, duck hunting. And duck hunting out out of the bayou. Yeah. Yeah, no. is that? I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they'll they'll uh, hunt gators that are like you know two to three feet long, and you know kind of catch and release and everything. But mini gators, yeah. mini gators. Yeah, yeah. you said I'm catch like, and release. I want what, are you, the, what are you hunting with? Your hands. Oh, yeah. spears. Yeah, you are. Yeah, spears. your hands. No, you are killing. It's catch and release. Oh, you, don't okay. you go for it. You yeah. Nah, dog. No. no. Get her nah. done. Don't be a baby. No. That's right. That sounds <laughs> gay. <laughs> hey, y'all are aware that we have a new app. It's not even quite, a, it's not really new anymore. It's been out for several months. If, if not, you should download it right now. Head on over to your favorite app store. Type in Cross Politic or Fight Laugh Feast or Pub TV. Once you find the app, you may need to update your old app, especially if you're on a Android phone, yeah. <laughs> and you may you may sorry. need to delete your current FLF app. We're sorry, but Android is it struggles. Uh, what, what's the word I'm updating. looking for, Andrew? Woke. Woke. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what? And Andrew's going to insert this, <laughs> uh, ra- you know yeah. random it adjectives. Has nothing to do with it. It's just yeah. a word I know. But it, but it won't work because woke yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. Woke, woke doesn't work. Yeah. Once downloaded, then it will work, and you'll be able to view or listen to our content right on your mobile device. As always, if you'd like to sign up for a pub membership, head over to fightlaughfeast.com, fightlaughfeast.com. Com. As you can see, we're joined today by two of our good friends, Andrew Krapischetz, executive entrepreneur, grill master, CEO, and founder of Red Balloon. You're the you're the grill master. It, it, well, no, balloon? I was going to say everything's true about that except for the grill master. Oh, I'm actually because, pretty darn good on a grill. I have a massive grill. Uh, well, I, I mean, are you I just talking like are you just talking like things. like a fire with like food on it? Is that it? Like yeah, not smoke. Sure. You're not talking about like smoke or anything. Because I, I you're getting up into my food. lane and my territory, and I start I made, getting a little sensitive about I made the definition. Seared ahi salmon the other okay, night on okay. my grill. Like I'm not okay. just like chicken. Beef, <laughs> okay. like I do things. All right, all right. come on, leave me all alone. Right. Right. He is also. I'm just a little sensitive about this. You know. <laughs> sure, <laughs> he's the CEO and founder of Red Balloon Dot Work, and founder of many businesses. Mm. Speaker of few languages, <laughs> and passionate about freedom. It's true. I'm actually kind of. Uh, I have a learning disability when it comes to languages. Uh, Andrew, thanks for coming back on Cross Politic. I'm always blessed to be here. And I get to sit next to you, Ned I, I Gabe. Know, I know. Which right. is, uh, it smells better this side of the table. Let's just, just, just get it true. out there. We're also grateful to have Dr. Ben Merkel, uh, president of New St. Andrews College, teaching elder at Christ Church, Mr. to the Mrs. Merkel, and father to the multiplying Merkel hordes. Exactly. And as a, El, as a grandfather. El, El Jefe, grand, exactly. grandpappy to the brand new, who is it? Ooh. Uh, Margaret. Uh, Maggie, 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 yeah, Mar- Margaret, yeah, Margaret, Dixon, Dixon. Uh, it, it was, are they going to call her Maggie or is it, is it Margaret? Uh, I th- I've heard both ways. Yeah. Okay, right. yeah, yeah. Both well, ways. congratulations, yeah. man. Yeah. Congratulations. That's great, also, man. grilled doctor. Oh yes. So there's master, <laughs> and then there's no doctor. <laughs> yeah. I was going to oh, ask because you like to work with a lot of dry aged. Oh yeah. Uh, there we go. But you do the bag thing. I have. 
Uh, What's the bag thing? Oh, it's just like a bag that you dry age it in. So you can yeah. do like a, oh, a month dry age, whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. So, so yeah. my wife bought me a a mini fridge or a mini oh, dry yeah. age thing that you actually put in. I have an yeah. outdoor fridge. You actually mm-hmm. put in your outdoor fridge and That's everything exciting. you do. Yeah, it, it's That's been. very exciting. I yeah. did just like a, a round steak. Okay. Just to test it, and man, it like really makes it rich. It's and pretty, that, and that's incredible. why yeah. we have Doctor Ben Merkel and Mister Andrew Krabbishitz on the show to talk about food. Grill. Yes. Grill. Yes. Grill I mean, clear, clearly, I eat a lot of food. You can see that from a distance. So, Andrew, um, Red Balloon um, and NSA, um, you guys have some kind of partnership. Go, yeah, I mean, I don't on. like to say it in public, although I feel like this is a pretty public <laughs> setting. I'm um, saying that I'm friends with Ben. It's a, it's an upper, I, it's, I didn't say Ben. I just said NSA. <laughs> okay, okay. NSA. NSA. Okay. Distance behind. yourself from Dr. And, Merkel. And no, he behind. likes to loudly yell and wave whenever he sees me on the street. <laughs> <laughs> Jump that, up and down. That is actually true. That's, that's no that exaggeration. True. Although, <laughs> when I'm praying at church or if I'm reading at church, Ben will often text me in the middle of my reading, what? don't mess up or <laughs> C minus. <laughs> like mean, mean things. He needs help and encouragement. <laughs> yeah, like, like, you have to hold him to a higher standard. I'm an elder, I guess. Uh, okay, that's wow. Yeah, wow. No, it's true. Th- it's things true. you didn't know were going on at Christ Church. <laughs> 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 Add this to the scandal. Um, so, w- w- what's the nature of the of this of this partnership, yeah. and and why? Okay, so um, I've had a lot of businesses come to me and say, hey, I want to hire an NSA student. How do I do that? Mm. Um, or an NSA graduate, because we know that they're the best people. And, and the answer was usually, well, you need to know someone and hope that they yeah. can introduce you to someone else. Right. Um, I know that even when I was running uh, MZ, now Lightcast, like I would have to have, like, I would like hire students to know who the cool students were and who were the not cool students were <laughs> so that I could know who to hire and not, like, there just wasn't a good system. And I had these businesses literally all over the country because of Red Balloon saying, I want to hire those people. How do I find them? And so wow. we concocted a little plan where we basically said, okay, let's make sure that all of the NSA students or a lot of them and the alumni are going to create a job seeker profile. We're going to give them a little badge that said you're an NSA person, which means you're the best. Um, And then we're going to make it free for employers to be able to search through that resume database um, and be able to start to interact with students even as freshman or sophomore and start to build relationships for internships, for employment, and be in a position where you can like – and we now have hundreds of those students – in our database that are NSA, again, alumni or current students. Wow. And so if you want to hire those people, whether you're looking for an internship over a summer and you want to get one of those people to come out to South Carolina or whatever, or you just want to hire them as they're graduating, now we have kind of the definitive database. And we're doing the same thing with people like TPUSA, Turning Point USA, mm-hmm. and some other big universities. Mm-hmm. But we started with NSA because we wanted to start with the best. There we go. Well, <laughs> this is a question maybe for both of you, but so often when people are – thinking about college for their, you know, their high school juniors, you know, getting ready to apply their senior year. Um, One of the common criticisms of New St. Andrews is, well, you know, that's for like nerdy people who are good at languages, not like Andrew. Right. And, um, and we want our, our kid to get a job. Yeah. And well, we're just worried. I mean, I know like you get a good, like theology, training but not a good job. Right. But that's like the opposite of what you're saying. Well yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring out some data. I'm gonna data oh, you a little bit. So, uh, so we do this Freedom Economy Index. We talk to seventy thousand businesses around the country and we ask them all kinds of things about inflation, about the economy, about their business, about hiring, but we ask them a lot about higher education because that's kind of in the news. I guess there's a, a president of a Harvard school never even heard of it. I think it's a junior college. I'm not entirely <laughs> yeah. sure. Uh, but Harvard anyway, she's, junior college. she's done some bad things. She lost her job. That's a thing, right? Yeah, okay. Happened. So we asked him, so how much do you care about higher education? Um, how likely are students coming out of higher education going to succeed at your business? 91% basically said anybody coming out of higher education generally, whether it's Harvard or Alabama or any of these schools, 91% of these businesses says, no, the people that we've hired out of that are not prepared for the workplace. They don't know how to work hard. Wow. You know, you see these TikTok yeah. videos of the eight to five girl be like, I had to work eight hours a day. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. So you have that kind of thing. With a 30 minute lunch yeah, break. Yeah, that's right. And I didn't have a TikTok break or anything. It's one. So, so you have that kind of culture. So then we took it another step. It was like, okay, so how much do you care about a bachelor's degree at all? Right? If they're not prepared, so we had 40% of our employers, so we said bachelor's degree, positive, negative, or neutral, right? 40% said neutral. And we kind of expected that. Like, we care less and less about our bachelor's mm. degree. This is the fascinating neutral. point. 
42% said it is a negative. Mm-hmm. If I see yeah. a resume with a bachelor's degree from a four-year college, I will be yeah. less likely to hire that person. So now wow. all you students with $100,000 of school debt yeah. and you're like, I have a bachelor's it's, degree. It's you put devaluing it on your resume. You it's devaluing the workplace. your, your yeah. workplace, right? Yeah. And so when you think, oh, NSA, yeah. those kids don't know how, know how to get jobs. Well, actually – all higher education, nobody wants to hire. And so we, we asked, I asked one of the employers, I'm like, why did you say you don't want a student with a bachelor's degree? And they're like, well, why would you want to hire an anarchist who's been trained by a Marxist for four years inside my four walls? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, when you put it that way, I kinda, I'm kind of i kind of with you on that. So, wow. uh, But I think that is now the mindset generally. So don't think that, well, you know, NSA is going to hurt my career. <laughs> College is going to hurt your career. Right. NSA might help it. Over to you, Ben. <laughs> well, I think I think uh, your data does a really good job of demonstrating um, uh, not just that like there's a distrust, but specifically like where the distrust is. They don't know how to work hard. They don't know how to work a full day. They don't have critical thinking skills. And so it's funny because you you start off with uh, that objection you've got. Somebody right. says, "Why would I go to NSA? Because you offer a degree in liberal arts." And our um, we've we've been trained to expect that the name of your degree corresponds to the job that you've been equipped right. to do. Mm-hmm. And so you want a you want a degree with a named job in it because accounting. That's, yeah. Nursing. That supposedly yep. guarantees you that particular job. Mm-hmm. But what you find is is that in in uh, restricting education to simply vocational certification, we've actually shrunk what an education really is into something that's far less rigorous and far less helpful in the, in the actual workforce. So like, for instance, on the, um, do they know how to work a full day? I've, I've used a statistic statistic a number of times. Like in 1960, a typical college student, um, spent 40 hours a week on college, going to class, studying, writing papers, getting ready for finals was 40 hours a week, which meant assume 12 hours in lectures. That's 28 hours, um, Mm. preparing for those lectures. A typical college student now is spending around somewhere between maybe five to seven hours a week preparing for class. Wow. We've, it, it, is, it is less than a fifth, right, uh, wow. of how much time it takes to prepare for class. So what used to be this rigorous, and it was overwhelmingly the liberal arts education that they were getting in 1960, that rigor has been replaced by this certification, which is a, a lower level of intellectual engagement takes far less time to study for because you're really just learning how to click certain things to get a certificate. Right. Right. And it's a very cheapened form of education. And so that's what um, students are walking out. College graduates are walking out having been equipped with. So now all of a sudden they face a 40 hour week, a job that requires you actually think that you don't just get pre, um, you know, pre perforated little yeah. uh, things that you tear off. Um, they're not equipped for that. The liberal arts education we're giving, what I find is, first of all, I don't see our students struggling to get work. And what Andrew is describing is, I, I get. I get regular emails. I get more emails asking me for NSA graduates that they could hire than I have students by a long shot. That's why this um, relationship, this partnership is really helpful because it's giving us a little bit of structure so I know where to, okay, you just need to go here and here's here's where you look yeah. if you want to answer that question of where do you get an NSA grad? Wow, we, we were just we were just on airplanes this this week, and <laughs> and I was and we were. I'm just wondering. So is this problem we're describing why you end up with doors sort of flying off of airplanes, <laughs> or no screws, or, 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 screws or, or, or like and wing. wing, wings missing bolts? I mean, engines yeah. catching on fire. <laughs> well, there is there is just across the board this like removal of accountability. Like right now, um, there's a new push now to eliminate uh, um, SAT scores, yeah, yeah, SAT right, and ACT. Right, right. Um, they don't want those things tracked. What's weird is they do want the DEI data tracked, but they do want <laughs> right. the, they, they don't want actual academic um, achievement wow. scored. And you know, the, the, wow. the, the marketing mantra of if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. Okay. Yeah. Well, if they if they are not going to track that, that's because they don't want they to don't, improve it. Right. They they, they don't uh, want that to be noticed because right. they're not trying to actually make people smarter. Is is part of the problem? It seems like uh, me and Knox were talking about this earlier, where somehow some uh, along the way, businesses started looking at colleges and expecting them to train their employees for their business. Yeah. And 
Um, and so there's this weird expectation there. But even, you know, as you kind of read through this report, like one of the funniest responses was, uh, I got two responses I read through. Um, uh, one person said, I found that graduates with the aforementioned scholastic achievements typically have an incompatible ideology with my business culture. Yeah. <laughs> the, the other one said, um, talking about, would you prefer to hire a, someone with a four-year degree or not? Said, at this point, I'll take the one with the talent and imagination and who don't look at their phone in the last 20 minutes. Right. Well, I think the imagination is the interesting part there, yeah. right? Um, and I've had a lot of college graduates um, who I've hired over the years who come in and they're like, okay, please give me a list of things to do. Like, just give me a list of things to do and I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Check. Yeah. And Check. I'm like, yeah, so computers are really good at lists and they're faster than you and they're cheaper than you. Yeah. And so if you think your employment is dependent on you knocking out a list of things to do, you're going to be fired soon yeah. and you're not useful to me. The, ro- the robots can take your job. The robots are going to take yeah. your job. Yeah. Whereas but we'll if just you pass are- legislation. <laughs> As you should. As you should. So, but, but if you are taught to be a creative person who can think outside the box, and I hate to use that term, um, because yeah. I like boxes a lot, and I don't know what's wrong with what's in the box. There's good stuff there. The box is right box. I get a lot of gifts in boxes. <laughs> no, exactly. Whiskey comes in boxes. Like, what's the matter with inside the box? Anyway, the point is, um, uh, when you have creative people who learn how to think, we're in a knowledge-based economy. We're not in yeah. uh, an industrial age. We're, we, we need people who can think. And if you have students at school who are told exactly what to do mm-hmm. to get a test score – to get a degree, Mm -hmm. those are not the people you want inside your organization. You want them to think like a business person. You want them to be creative and not just knock out tasks. Well, it's even worse at the university level because I took classes where they didn't want me to think. Uh, They wanted me to repeat or respond with what the answer that they want. That's right. Yeah. I had multiple classes where I got bad grades because I'm, I'm, (laughs) <laughs> right now, outside the box, you were thinking, <laughs> yeah, and I was, I was thinking, and I, I was a dumb, I wasn't a very good student. And I was a- Andrew's dumb. describing like when, um, where college is an industry best partnership is when it, there is a sort of stay in your lane kind of thing that's needed. I think colleges trying to teach the vocational skills is colleges being used for what they're not best at. Uh-huh. Like mm. I, I can what one of the things we can do at NSA really well is we can teach these students to think. Right, we can we can teach that, but it, when it comes to the specifics of what's going on in the in the um, workforce, first of all, it's an ever adapting world. Yeah. Right. And you know, if you get a professor of that skill at this college in five years, he's out of date. He's he, done. he he yeah. doesn't he's not really teaching you what you're doing in the workforce. It's far better if I can work on a kid, get him to be a hardworking, intelligent, um, clear thinker, you know, critical thinker, communicator creative, knows how to show up to work sober and not planning on embezzling today. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just a few, like the bar is <laughs> low. Than, it's just, that's just going to happen. I wasn't planning on it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but but if, if I, if I create, you know, educate a kid like that and then hand him across the street to a business like what Andrew's running, he'll teach them to code. He'll teach them to do sales. He'll teach them. And he's going to do a far better job than um, most college programs. What I constantly hear from the industry is, if you come to, um, you know, I'm, let's say I'm a computer programmer. If you come to my business with a computer degree, the first thing I have to do is unteach everything you've learned mm-hmm. so that I can teach you to do it the way I, I need you to do it. So it's not so much that they need the skill, it's that they need the adaptability, the ability to learn and pick up new things. But you, you ask, you know, why do colleges increasingly um, aim in that direction? Right. The weird thing is I would actually pin that on student loans um, mm. be- because mm. what you've got is – with with federal money coming in the form of student loans, right? As the student loans come come in, as soon as the student loans are available, the next thing that automatically happens is colleges jack up their tuition. Yep. Every time the federal government gives more money for college, yep. college is going to raise tuition. But what happens is that tuition gets higher and higher. That means your 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 student loan gets bigger and bigger. How does a um, 18 year old young man justify taking out a forty thousand dollar loan or or a forty thousand dollar loan four years in a row? Right. You know, one hundred sixty grand of debt. The way that you can make that decision make sense because it it makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, you know, I've I've said before that student loan debts the only kind of debt that you can you qualify for by showing that you can't pay it. Right. You know, right, right. your mortgage, right. your car, all and that. There's no have, capital behind it. Yeah, you're not leveraging you, you have to, anything. You always have to show that I can pay this. Yeah. Yeah. The student loan debt, you qualify by say, by demonstrating, I can't afford this. Good, you qualify. <laughs> 
Here's your hundred. Here's a two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. For you. <laughs> so how does that make sense? Well, the the it makes sense when the recruiter can say, all right, here are these twelve jobs, and here's the salary attached to each job. This degree gets you that job, which means this degree gets you that salary. There's the return on your investment, and then suddenly it starts to appear to be a sensible decision. Right. It isn't. It's still stupid, right. but it it appears sensible. And so the more colleges can attach their degree to a, a, um, a certificate that will give up the guarantees them a job, the more they can jack up their tuition and collect all that student loan money. And that's the very thing that your study right. shows. Like the expectations are absolutely unrealistic. And yeah. it's, they have to set those unrealistic expectations or they can't justify their cost or the mm -hmm. student loans. Right. right. And then we asked the employers balloon, yeah. in our freedom economy index, like how many students have a reasonable expectation for compensation coming out of higher education? 90% <laughs> are like, no, <laughs> they have no idea. Yeah. Like you have to work hard and you don't get paid very much because well, you don't have any but, skills actually. But the they, guidance counselor promised me. <laughs> yes, they've, they spent, they've spent four years living in an imaginary world being infantilized. So, so you yeah. live, you live in a dorm, which is, this imaginary little city right. where your food just appears for you every day. <laughs> um, you 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 don't have real life. You're right. living off of imaginary money, your student loans, right. and then and then we think this is somehow the way to prepare them for adulthood. For real we've actually we've retarded their growth. Yeah. We've not actually set right. them up. For so I have a question for Ben on this. So we it, there's so many parents that have this this image of them at college and like. I got connections yeah. and I met my wife and like, I was really right. cool there at college. So I'm going to send my kid to college. Right. Yeah. But we start to see these employers saying, I don't want to hire those people. Uh, we have a demographic problem. There's not enough high schoolers to justify all the universities in America today as it is. So yeah. we're going to see declining enrollment, even wow. though your enrollment's growing because you're awesome. <laughs> Clearly, well, the college is awesome. Let's not get carried away. <laughs> so, but so how did what does what does that shift look like over the next ten years? I, I think there's going to be a lot of universities that simply go out of business. Oh, absolutely. But how does that mind shift, mindset change for parents yeah. to say I'm going to not send my kid to Fill in the blank university. We we have to we th and it's really weird for a college president to say this, but we really have to question the necessity of the college degree because we're, right now it's being pitched as this degree is necessary if you want to enter the workforce. That's just a lie. It's just not true. And there's too many examples of people who never got the degree at all and did absolutely wonderfully, and then and. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, didn't get a degree anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and more, more and more data that shows this degree is not delivering what it's promising. Well, now it's, it's the, the data showing that it's a liability. Like yeah. a bit more and more businesses, not only right. did it not help you, but it, it's making things worse yeah. now. I think, I think a full third of the people that are getting college degrees probably ought not to be there. Right. It really shouldn't. Ooh. And then, and then of those remaining two thirds, you know, I think, People who are doing engineering or nursing, you got to do, that's the degree you have to get. And, and those degrees, sure. actually, there's a lot of integrity to them. And I still think those are, are solid degrees. Most of the other degrees would be replaced by a strong liberal arts, broad um, education, combined with some really good internships that yeah, mentor yeah. you into the workforce. I'm going to read this ad and then... Um uh, Knox, it's your turn. It's man. your turn, man, because you haven't said anything. I've yet. been enjoying the questions yeah. coming from Andrew. Right. Sorry, that's that's a good yeah. question. Yeah. the mission of Armored Republic is to honor Christ by equipping free men with tools of liberty necessary to preserve God-given rights. In the Armored Republic, there's no king but Christ. We are free craftsmen. Body armor is a tool of liberty. We create tools of liberty. Free men must remain ever vigilant against tyranny wherever it appears, and God has given us the tools of liberty needed to defend those rights he has bestowed upon us. Armored Republic is honored to offer you those tools. Armored Republic makes body armor, and you know you don't have enough body armor. Visit them at AR, the number 500, AR500, armor.com. Ben, you were saying that you still think that nursing degrees um, are still good. Mm -hmm. I was wondering for how long, because you got so much happening with Big Pharma. Well, the trans, are, the the trans, the trans stuff thing? that's coming in. Abortion. So how long do you think those degrees will actually still be good with the current trajectory we're on? Yeah, you, you've got... The there, yeah, that's a whole other layer of issues that are coming in. That, I mean, that, COVID already showed us a lot of problems there, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. That, that could it could get that could get changed a lot in the very near future. I, I just simply mean that um, the nursing classes there are hard skills that are more mm. um, 
that they're really working to inculcate and develop that are the ones you're actually going to need to go on for that job. I see a closer resonance between what they're studying there and the work they're employed for. Well, you get, you get get your report card pretty fast with nursing and engineering. Like either you know how to make an airplane fly or not, you know how to heal someone or not. Whereas a lot of other things. Well, even so my point is that I was thinking about is that if that is faltering, and it seems like it mm-hmm. is, someone with a strong ethics is going to be able to hold that up a lot longer, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. So, and that's one of the things that you go and get a classical education, you really start developing. I was yeah. thinking about that because on this, um, the data that we got from you, Mr. Crapuchette, it says that the talent shortage will just get worse because high schools and colleges produce no talent. How do you, how do you cultivate and produce talent if you're, if you're a high school or a college? Okay, say, say that again. What do you, what do you mean by that? Well, like, I, I think that they're just saying that the people aren't thinking. Um, right, you, yeah. have a, you have a process of um, – I was thinking about it for me. When I uh, am discipling and training my kids, I'm producing a certain type of thought yeah. process, a talent in them, that by the time they go to Logos, I'm hoping I'm giving some materials yeah. that the teachers can say, oh, you have this. Let me outfit right. you with that and pack it on so it gets thicker, gets stronger, your muscles, you know. Yeah. Um, versus a lot of times I don't think parents are even thinking about, well, I'm just going to give them to you and you figure out yeah, right. how to develop them and make Well, let's say, you know, think about when, when are the things you've learned the most in your life? Well, it's usually when it's hard, right? That's when you actually learn things. And we have a society that's trying to avoid hard things, especially for our kids, right? right. And so school is not hard and high schools, it's not hard. Colleges are not that hard. You talk about five hours of prep for the lecture. Like, what do you do with the rest of your time? Drink yourself silly? Like, seriously, what are you even doing with your $200,000 of debt? So I think we have, as a society, are so afraid of hard things. That's why we don't have skilled people who know how to work hard when they finally get to the workplace. And and we need to not be afraid of hard things for our kids. And I think that's a lesson that's, 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 that's hard before for you get to us, college. Right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, I was telling you guys before, I'm headed to Africa on Thursday. I'm going to take Jackson, my <laughs> oldest, over to um, African Christian University. Cody Buckham's. He's, University. yeah, he's yeah, su- yeah. super nervous about it. He knows it's going to be super hard and it's going to be very formative to him. Yeah. And my, my temptation, my, I, like, I'm, I'm like, man, I want to protect him. Like, there's nothing I can do. If something goes bad over there, he is completely on his own. Yeah. He's a long way from home. And so we need to not be so precious and we need to be like, no, our kids are going to do hard <laughs> things. We need anti fragile kids. Yeah. Um, and NSA is hard. Like you guys read like a million books in like the first hour. I don't even know what's going on there. So it's it's very two million, a million, two million, a million, a million books per it's, hour. It's a million books an hour. I don't even know what's going on here. Do the math. <laughs> Do the math. Yeah. Seriously, but but it's hard, right? Yeah. And I think that's the only way that we get a society that is that produces hard people is if they go through hard work. Mm. Um, and that's we need men to do hard work. And if they don't do hard work, they're not going to be strong fathers. They're not going to be strong husbands. Well, and this is kind of part of my question a little bit, kind of talking about the relationship between business expectations and universities, uh-huh. you know, offerings or whatever. It seems to me that if, um, if you had, uh, if you know, Toby was born in 1980 and let's say in 2000, you have a child and that child's now 24 years old today. Okay. Right. 20 born in 2000, 2024 maths. Yeah. Very easy. But wow! But it seems to me <laughs> like, and that's someone who's twenty. Most you know, average age of having a baby is what twenty five, twenty seven, or whatever it is, and so they'd be even a lot older or younger today. Um, so, but it seems to me like whatever's been produced in the nineteen seventies mm-hmm. is kind of what's starting to feed our workforce. Their kids. So mom and dad and born in the 1970s, their kids are starting to feed our workforce. All right. Yeah. He's going to answer this question, but we've got to end the show now, and then we're going to go backstage. Oh. That one and was so good. That's that a good question. Setup. And if you're, a, wow, pub, if, a you're a pub, question. if you're a pub TV member, you can go backstage right now and catch the rest of this conversation. Great having you guys on today. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. So if you're single, get married. If you're married, have you some kids. And if you have kids, go baptize them. Until tomorrow, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go fight, laugh, and feast. This is Cross Politic. The morning stars sang together. After God delivered Israel through the Red Sea, Moses and Miriam led the people in singing. God destroyed Israel's enemies under King Jehoshaphat while the choir sang. When Jesus was born, the angels sang. And before going to the cross, he sang. 
God rejoices over us with singing, and one of the only things we know for certain that everyone will be doing in heaven is singing. At New St. Andrews College, we understand that music is not an elective. It is central to our being and identity. We endeavor to train all our students in a joyful and robust musical literacy that will help them shape culture in a Christ-like direction wherever they go. Additionally, we offer the Certificate of Music in conjunction with our bachelor's degree in liberal arts and culture for students who desire extra music training beyond the regular music courses they will take as a part of the core curriculum. In the certificate program, you won't simply appreciate music or listen to it or talk about it. You will do music. You will study it, analyze it, read it, write it, sing it, and play it. You will receive private instruction in your primary instrument as well as secondary lessons in voice, piano, conducting, and other instruments. You will receive a solid foundation in music theory and analysis. You will study music history, church music, and music pedagogy. And when you graduate, you will leave with the ability to sing, play, understand, and steward music in whatever church or community you plant yourself. I'm Dr. David Erb, and this is the Certificate of Music at New St. Andrews College.